Chief. You're good. You're about 30 minutes tops. So he'll get us in and out. But it's really important to um, know that Chief Magazine is going to talk about. And one thing that struck me tonight is I was running. I was running in the dark, so don't yell at me about the safety of running in the dark. Um, Chief Magazine talked to our coaching staff in our department the day after we got back from Hurricane Irma, so less than two months ago. He then talked to the big group that was able to make it the first, first time around, and that was about six weeks ago, a month ago. And in between those two dates, less than two months, we've had almost 100 people killed in active shooter scenarios. And that gives me the chills because this five minute video is kind of, it's at times hokey, but it will straight home to you. And it gave me chills when I saw it, and I've seen it four or five times, but it gave me, it gives me chills each time. Doesn't matter whether you're in Vegas watching a country music show or you're at church on Sunday. Um, it could happen anywhere. So with that, Chief Frank Magazine, UNF TV Chief. I hope you know.
what we're going to try to do is get the shooter to stop killing and hurting people. How that happens is up to the shooter. But what I want you to do is know this. There are things that you can do that maximize your potential to survive a situation like this. And you might be sitting here right now thinking, you'd rather be someplace else. But let me tell you, this very thing happened at FSU. You see, a couple of years ago, at night, at the library, there was a guy who showed up at FSU for the purpose of becoming an active shooter. Now, the last group, any of y'all ever play in a sport where if you get the ball from the other team, you had to yell a buzzword so that everybody knew? For instance, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Even as old as I am, when I played football in high school, I played defensive back. I was a little skinnier and a little faster than me. And if I had an interception, I was supposed to yell the word OSCE. I got no idea what the word OSCE means, except other than, now we got the ball, guys. Let's run it the other way. And you block for them. Well, there's a concept in the military and law enforcement world called the OODA loop. And what that OODA loop is, it's a psychological phenomenon that occurs in your brain Every time you do something, what sport do you play? Swimming. So when you're doing the breaststroke, do you do that? Freestyle. freestyle. So when you're doing freestyle, when you're swimming, what do you think? Nothing. Really? Get, yeah, get to the other side. But the thing is, is your technique has to be sound, right? To maximize your times. Well, what happens is, you get that trained into your system. And if something happens that interrupts your train of thought, it affects your performance. So what I want you to remember is this. We always want to try to affect the performance of an active shooter if we don't run it. Because you want to interrupt their hula loop. Now, everybody say that word for me, hula loop. It's a funny word. It's just. It's just a funny word. So this is what happens. The FSU shooter shows up to the library with a gun. When he gets to the front door of the library, he stops. And it's all videotaped. And, and the, the dude goes, like, what's going on? And he leaves, and he walks off camera, and what he's doing is he's regrouping because his OODA loop was interrupted. You see, when he was a student at FSU, all you did was walk straight into the library. What they had done since he left is they put in turnstiles, kind of like what we have here. You familiar with those? So when he got there, he was expecting to walk right in and start shooting people. It interrupted his wife. That's right, it interrupted his loop. So he goes off camera, he regroups, he comes back, and immediately he jumps over the turnstiles, and there's a welcome desk there, okay? So, what do you think the two students on, at behind the welcome desk do? No, they see the gun, I forgot to tell you that. Good. They hide behind the desk, right? They hide behind the desk. So what do you think the active shooter does? He walks behind the desk and he starts shooting. And he hits one of the students in the leg. Thank God, she's okay. But you see, you have been trained to hide. And what we found out by doing all our studies in active shooters is this. They were hitting people at a very high rate. They were aiming at people and hitting them higher than trained police officers under stress. Why do you think that was? They're fish in a barrel. My words, not yours. They're, sick. They're, they're balled up under the desk, right? They're balled up under the desk. And all the shooter has to do is boom. So, what happens is he shoots the first person. There's another person underneath that desk. Then you see the shooter do this. What just happened? What? Oodaloo. Oodaloo. Somebody interrupted his oodaloo. And when he did that, he went this way. And then guess what happens? The two people that hide behind the desk, the one shot in the leg, they get up and they run to safety. So when you watch this video, we're fixing to show you. It's about six minutes long, okay? It's not very long at all. The first thing you're going to tell you to do is run. But the one thing I want you to understand, when you run, when you run, make sure you're running to safety. Don't run into the path of danger, okay? 
Can you track people here? So follow it. <laughs> Run to safety. The next thing we're going to ask you to do is we're going to say, if you can't get to safety, we're going to tell you to hide. And what we mean by that is, let's say, what could be the very first indicator to you that there's an active shooter in our area right now? So we'll say that one time. You hear people screaming. What else? Gunshots. Don't wait for me or my department to come over a loudspeaker and say, active shooter in building 58 in the area of room 2704, run high fight. If you hear it, you need to be prepared to take action. Don't wait for us to tell you, okay? But you could hear people screaming. You could hear gunshots. You could see something, right? I want you to hide. Now, when we look around this room, not a lot of places to hide, is there? So what are we going to do? All right. There's no wrong answer. Who said run? If we can run, what are we going to make sure we're running to? Safety. Safety. Okay? So we're going to run to safety. If we have to hide. Have you ever seen National Geographic when they talk about big balls? You see those big balls of fish that swim like this? And then all of a sudden the big fish comes right through the middle, takes a giant mouthful, and then the ball goes back together. I don't want you to be a bait ball. See, human nature is, in times of crisis, you're going to bunch up together in one big bait ball. When you, what you should do is spread out. Then it makes it harder to hit a target. The other thing is, these doors, you can, there's garbage cans in here that you can use to help barricade the doors. What happens if the door gets open, but there's barricades there? What does that do? That's exactly right. You're interrupting the oodaloo. And that's exactly what we want to do. Because you know what happens when we interrupt the oodaloo? It gives us an opportunity to react. And that means if we can't hide, what do we have to do next? we got to fight. Now, ladies, how many times have you been told how to fight if a man or a boy or a young man attacks you. That's exactly what they told you to do, right? What else did they tell you? What happens if you miss? What else do you do? You, I like the way you think. The eyeballs. You fight like you never had to fight before. Look, I know it's counterintuitive for a policeman to stand up here and tell you to fight, but if it's a fight for your life, I want you to fight. There is no rules. You find what you can pick up. Does anyone in here have a stainless steel? Well, there you go. If you got one of these. If you got the Christmas decorations in your hand, okay. I mean, we're going to do what we got to do to win, right? That's exactly what I was talking about. Those garments things. What happens if I throw this? What happened? What I just do? Interrupt the loop. You were paying attention, sort of, to me, right? But my point is this, what we want to do is we want to, we want to create that instance where there is a reaction that takes their mind off of harming or killing people and it gives us an opportunity to defend. So what are we going to do first? Where are we going to run? What are we going to do second? What are we going to do last? That's right. We're going to run, hide, fight. The last thing I want to talk to you about in this video, they're going to talk about the 911 response. Now, you're not going to see the University Police Department respond dressed like the people in this video, okay? But the way they do it is the way we would do it. And know this, we are here to stop the killing, and you may be wounded and laying on the floor. You need to know that we are not there to stop and provide you first aid. We are going to tell you, we train our officers to tell you, we see you and help us on the way. But know this, they're humans too. They have a oodaloo. They get zeroed in on something. They may forget to say something at all. But no, our number one priority is stopping the killing. And then you are our 1A priority if you are wounded. We're going to help you. Now, anybody here over the age of 21? I'd have never guessed you. <laughs> Maybe you not. Look. Second Amendment says certain people can carry a gun. If you're carrying a gun, 
When I signed up to be a police officer 35 years ago, they taught me and trained me and said, one day I might have to shoot a bad guy. Okay? Now I'm fortunate. 35 years, I never had to shoot a bad guy. I've been shot at a few times, but I never had to shoot a bad guy. I'm telling you, folks, I never, ever, ever signed up to shoot a good guy. So if you're a law abiding citizen that's carrying a gun concealed and you find yourself in the merch in the middle of an active shooter event and you are going to help, like what happened in Texas, as soon as the police show up, the very first thing you need to do, hands on the ground, knees on the ground, hands in the air, put the gun down and do what the police tell you. Because they don't know if you're an active shooter designed <coughs> disguising yourself as a victim. Okay? So you just need to make be aware of that, okay? So we're going to show you this video, and then after it's over, I'm going to tell you, I'll answer a few questions, and then uh, there's a real quick video that I want to show you that's about one and a half minutes long that I think that you'll enjoy, it, okay? Pay attention for me, okay, y'all? There is simulated gunfire here, okay? It may feel like just another day at the office, but occasionally, life feels more like an action movie than reality. The authorities are working hard to protect you and to protect our public spaces. But sometimes, bad people do bad things. Their motivations are different. signs may vary, but the devastating effects are the same. And unfortunately, you need to be prepared for the worst. shooter event. Your survival may depend on whether or not you have a plan. The plan doesn't have to be complicated. There are three things you could do that make a difference. Run, hide, fight. First and foremost, if you can get out, do. Always try and escape or evacuate, even when others insist on staying. Encourage others to leave with you, but don't let them slow you down with indecision. Remember what's important, you, not your stuff. Leave your belongings behind and try to find a way to get out safely. Trying to get yourself out of harm's way needs to be your number one priority. Once you're out of the line of fire, try to prevent others from walking into the danger zone and call 911. If you can't get out safely, you need to find a place to hide. Act quickly and quietly. Try to secure your hiding place the best you can. Turn out lights, and if possible, remember to lock doors. Silence your ringer and vibration mode on your cell phone. And if you can't find a safe room or closet, try to conceal yourself behind large objects that may protect you. Do your best to remain quiet and calm. As a last resort, 
if your life is at risk. Whether you are alone or working together as a group, fight. Act with aggression. Improvise weapons. Disarm. And commit to taking the shooter down, no matter what. Try to be aware of your environment. Always have an exit plan. Know that in an incident like this, victims are generally chosen randomly. The event is unpredictable and may evolve quickly. The first responders on the scene are not there to evacuate or tend to the injured. They are well trained and are there to stop the shooter. safety and survival. Be aware and be prepared. And if you find yourself facing an active shooter, there are three key things you need to remember to survive. Run, hide, fight. Okay, I have a question. How many of y'all saw that guy running down the stairs at the end and take his jacket off? Why do you take the jacket off? I can't figure it out. Dude's <laughs> like. Okay, any questions? None? I did that good of a job. Let me tell you this. When I when I started doing this training for groups of individuals around the university, I never thought in a million years that anyone would actually have to use it. I figured it was just one of those things that I'd like to make sure you know about. So that in the event you find yourself in a situation, you're armed with knowledge to help you survive the encounter. My hope is that you never find yourself in a situation where you have to use one high five. But my prayer for you is that you do you survive it. So I did this for the people in FISTAC, that's physical facilities. They're the people that do a lot of the hard work around this university while we're all at home with that sleep. They're the people that vacuum the floor clean the bathrooms, empty the trash. We do all the things that we tend to take for granted when we come to work or come to school. And there was a, there was a, I did like 500 employees. And there was a guy in one of those classes. His name was Frank Brown. And Mr. Brown, is a, he works here. And Mr. Brown, in my mind, is a, is a hero, a true hero. But he was in a, off duty from here, he was in a bank in Jacksonville. I went in and took everybody in the bank hostage. And this is going to be just a brown story. Now, because it's on a new site, you're going to have to watch the commercial first. So I have no way endorsing this product. I don't even know what it is. But I'm just letting you know in advance, and then we get to see Mr. Brown. But listen to his words, okay? And the dog stopped 
and went back. He called the dog. Come on back. The dog went back there. So the dog was not going to kill the dog because the dog had found me. And um, I told I asked him, uh, uh, one of them associate. I said, the door locked. She said, no, the only way to lock it from the outside. And so I said, okay. I said, once you go back there, I said, I'm going to let you know that's going to be your time to get out of there. So when I jumped up the rocks and come, I said, go. And I jumped up and run out the door. My leg was asleep. And so I went to go forward, but I went sideways and took off a whole row of chairs. Boom, boom, boom. And if he heard the noise, he thought they were coming in. And that what really gave everybody a chance to get away. Because the doors started locking, people started, you know, getting a chance to run out of there. And um, I had to roll out of there. When I rolled, I rolled to the door and I caught the door like this right here, I was on my knee. He said, stop! And I said to him, I said, you're going to have to shoot me in the back, but I'm going, I'm going to roll again. And I rolled out there to the car. And that's where I, that way, that way I was there. And they came, before he came, you know, they, everybody came and got me. But my life flashed in front of my eyes. But I knew one thing, he wasn't going to get me back there in the room. But like I said, I worked you know, that we, we did, I had to shoot him. And I was not going to be uh, laying in that room and, and be shot like no sitting door. I think Frank Brown's a hero. Give him a hand. Okay, I'm done here. But before I go, I want to say just a couple of things. First of all, I want to thank you for being the student athletes that you are. I've been the chief of police here for three years, and I can tell you that I don't have any issues that come out of the athletic department, and that's because of the caliber of the student athletes that we have here. And don't ever lose sight of the important role you play as the face of this university when you're out there competing on behalf of the Ospreys you become the face of the university. And people, whether you believe it or like it or not, they look up to you. There are students here that are your age that look up to you because of what you do here. And I just want you to know as an alumnus of this university that I'm proud to call myself an Osprey just because of the fine young men and women like you sitting here in this room tonight that I'm proud to do so. So I thank you very much for your time and attention tonight. Remember, we're going to do what? Run, hide, fight. Okay, give yourself a hand. <laughs> One last thing. If you see me around campus, if you see any of our police officers, you'll take the time to wave at us and use all your fingers. We would appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> you'll have a great day. Okay? <laughs>